Is medical school the worst financial decision you can ever make? Maybe, maybe not. In this video, I'm going to go over some tips that have made medical school a little bit more affordable. As a medical student, there has been times where I've checked my bank account and it has said something like zero. It looked pretty scary. And as you may know, the average medical student graduates with $250,000 of debt. <laughs> that's a ton of money. And in some places, that's like buying a house. Probably not in California, but you get what I'm saying. And as someone who doesn't come from a lot of wealth, this can be a huge burden. One thing to know is that the average medical student comes from a ton of wealth. So, you know, maybe they have something to fall back on, but that's not everyone. In this video, I want to go over my top five ways that I make medical school more affordable. They call themselves the foods and medicine. Garcia and Alexis Alemán. They become a social media People sensation. People reaching out to us. Today we got foods and medicine tapped in. Yes, sir. So my number one tip is apply for scholarships. So if you're in medical school or, you know, even if you're just in college, you most likely had to work really hard to get there. And so that means you're already a very accomplished person, especially if you're in medical school. You'd be surprised by how competitive you are for a lot of these scholarships. So thankfully, I was awarded a full ride scholarship that honestly means the world to me and has made life so much easier, especially being an undocumented student who doesn't qualify for federal loans. However, I live in LA and LA is super expensive. So that means that I have to be smart and strategic with how I manage my money to make that money stretch. So for purposes of transparency, I'm just gonna flat out tell you guys, this scholarship covers all my tuition. And on top of that, they give me a stipend to cover housing, cost of living, you know, food, all that stuff. And that amount is about $3,000 a month. So if you look up how much it costs to live in LA, it's one of the most expensive cities in the country. So those $3,000, you have to be pretty strategic with how you're going to manage that. And to be honest, especially my first year, I struggled a lot because I moved out here and I wasn't in student housing, nothing like that. And honestly, it was just really expensive for me. And rents for one bedroom out here was really expensive and I didn't really know anyone out here so you know I just lived by myself and honestly it, it wasn't enough money for me and I was dipping into money that I saved over my you know working throughout my gap years and working throughout college and even before that so I had to dip into some of that so when I got to medical school it was still pretty difficult to you know meet my needs um, pay my rent, pay my food, pay the car, pay the gas. It was it was hard. I'm not gonna lie. So I actually applied to a few scholarships, not too many, but I have applied to a couple scholarships since I've gotten into medical school. And to be honest, I've gone. I think I've gotten every single one of them. So once you're in, you know, like it was really hard to get to medical school. So I feel like you have a pretty good chance, you know, at getting some of these things. <laughs> And kind of backtracking a little bit, um, during undergrad too, I applied to a ton of scholarships and that's how I was able to go to college. I went to the University of Washington um, because I also didn't qualify for loans at that time either. So really, I funded pretty much my entire education through, through scholarship and through working. So another tip I have for you guys, some of you might be scared of this especially if you grew up in a Latino household, like you already hear horror stories about this. But trust me, this is this has been a game changer for me. Like it's literally changed everything. And that is credit cards. So a lot of people ask us, can you have fun as a medical student? And, you know, when you're barely meeting, when you are barely paying for your rent and your food, it's hard to book a vacation or something like that or book a flight and if you're an out-of-state student meaning you came you're going to a medical school that's not where you're from it can be really hard to just visit family or friends and credit cards have made that possible for me more recently i was able to stay at this crazy hotel 
Usually rooms here go from between $1,000 and $2,000 a night, but I was able to stay here completely free. And with my credit card, I also get free room upgrades. So I was able to stay at this crazy room right here. Super nice. Honestly, the nicest thing I've ever stayed at. This also includes many other benefits such as hotel credit, which you can use for restaurants, bars, or things like that. As you can see here, I was able to eat at this really fancy brunch, which costs around $100 per person, but I was able to eat there for free pretty much. So let's be real. What comes to your mind when you think about airports? Man, it's usually a negative experience, bruh, like, I'm in LA, so I have to deal with LAX every time I fly. But having credit cards have honestly made airports a pretty lit experience. Being an out-of-state student and always having things going on, I fly a ton, so my favorite benefit is by far the airport experience. I get access to lounges where I have free food, free bars, workstations, and even showers. There's been several times where I've booked an entire vacation, hotel, flight was covered through points um, with credit cards. And to be honest, I feel like this is a life hack. But disclaimer, if you're going to be using credit cards, you need to be a responsible person. Like the money you use with the credit card I treat it like a debit card, so I don't spend any money that I don't have. It's easy to be like, oh wow, like I have a limit of $10,000, I can go buy anything that's $10,000, but then you're going to end up paying interest, and that kind of defeats the purpose of everything. The purpose of having a credit card is to, to reap the benefits and to get free things. During my gap years, I made it my goal to be financially literate before I went to medical school. And that meant I learned about things like credit cards, investment, and all that stuff. Because, you know, we're studious foods. Not just studious, but an overall just smart food. I have many credit cards, but my favorite, I have like a whole arsenal of American Express cards. Ranging from cards that have absolutely no fees to cards that kind of cost a lot. But to be honest, they pay for themselves way over. My favorite cards are the American Express Gold Card and the American Express Platinum card. At the time of recording this, the gold card has a sign-up bonus of 90,000 points. I value each American Express point at two cents per point, so that's essentially $1,800. And that's just to sign up. In addition to this, you're gonna get points for the money you spend. This right here is the American Express Platinum card, which I love this card. This is basically my travel card. This is where I get most of my benefits at the airports, at hotels, and things like that. And as you can see here, the sign up bonus for this currently is 150,000 points. So again, two cents per point. I value this at $3,000 as a sign up bonus. Really, when it comes to credit cards, you want something that is right for you. And there are so many resources out there that you can look into um, that will help you explain, break down all the different types of cards, how to use them and everything. If you're interested in any of the cards I mentioned, I will go ahead and post my referral link in the the description um, you can go ahead and click that sign up and then you'll get a bonus and then I'll get a little bonus as well so it'll help me out and help you out as well so for my next tip I honestly think this is something that I started learning at a very young age you might relate to this but when I was a little kid my parents would take me to these quinceañeras and there would be these bomb ass food you know birria tacos whatever and they always took food home with them. So tip number three is take advantage of the free food. So when you're in medical school or even in college, you're going to notice that there's always free food. And usually these, these will be at events. So maybe it's like a, a club meeting, a student organization or something who's holding some sort of meeting and they have oh free pizza available or free meals available or whatever it is. And I'm not going to lie, man, there's been times where I was pretty down bad. And so I would show up to these events and I'd wait to the end. And if there was a ton of free food and as soon as someone gave me the green light and they said, oh, yo, there's a ton of food, like take whatever you want home. Man, you already know I was on it. So I would literally take a week's worth of food with me if I can. You know, sometimes like a lot of that food just gets thrown away. So, you know, if you don't eat it, it's going to waste. Tip number four, housing. So you've heard all the horror stories. Living in LA is super expensive. 
large amount of people who are supposedly moving out of LA to go to Texas or Nevada, Las Vegas, whatever. So what are you supposed to do when you're a medical student who's not making any money and is living off either loans or scholarship? Well, to be honest, it depends on your situation and I know it could be really hard. For my school, we are pretty lucky that we have student housing available. Not everyone gets it, but if you do get it, it's significantly cheaper than the LA market. It's still probably not Texas cheap or whatever, but it's a lot cheaper than you would get if you were just to go on Zillow or whatever and find a place. Obviously, there's downsides to this. It depends on whether you're cool with this or not, but all your classmates are around, you know, it, it almost feels like a dorm. Um, if you have roommates, which does make it cheaper too, then you kind of, a lot of times here, you don't really get the option to choose who they are going to be. So, you know, it's kind of random. Me personally, I live in a three bedroom place and it's way cheaper than it would be if I was at a one bedroom. Obviously, you know, it's nice to have your own place. I would absolutely love to, you know, I just like the privacy and all that stuff. And, you know, sometimes you do what you got to do, you know, like if it's saving you a thousand bucks a month, like, man, like that's a lot of money. Like you can do a lot with that. That's in a year. That's $12,000. If you're in school for four years, man, that's what $48,000. So it's a lot of money. Tip number five. Now this, this might be very controversial because I already know how you all are. We all know how medical students are. We all know how student, you know, anyone is. We basically run off coffee. So this might be very controversial, but don't go buy coffee every single day. Now, it might not seem like that much, but if you're spending five, six, seven dollars every day at Starbucks, man, if you add that up, let's say you did that five days a week, that's what, $35 a week? That's $140 a month, which is over $1,000 in one year. I'm not saying you shouldn't get your coffee. I'm just saying that buying that every single day adds up. I'm I'm also not saying don't drink caffeine. There are just cheaper ways to do it. And something like a Keurig, which up front might cost you 70, 80 bucks, but you have coffee at a much cheaper rate. Or, you know, just a simple coffee maker. Yeah, it's annoying having to make it every single day, but but hey, this video is about saving money and that's one of the ways to save money. And this also applies to going out to eat. Like, yeah, we're really busy and I'm not even gonna lie. Like sometimes it's so hard to get food in me. Like I've gone entire days without eating because I've been just so busy. And I, by the time I get home, I'm just so tired that I go straight to sleep. And obviously that's not healthy. So in that situation, like, man, if you can buy food, go for it. But if you have the capacity to, you know, and you go grocery shopping once a week or whatever and meal prep, you know, spend two, three hours of your week grocery shopping and meal prepping, like, I promise you, you're going to save so much money. And plus, it's a lot healthier. And I also have some bonus tips. So bonus tips. This is for when you're really down bad, like I was when I first got here. But if you were walking down the street, especially around campus and stuff, you're going to see free things. You're going to see a couch. You're going to see a desk. You're going to see whatever out there. And not all of us can just hash out a couple hundred bucks to buy a new couch or even more. When I got to medical school, to be honest, I got that couch right there. It's not the nicest thing. It's honestly, to be honest, I fucking hate that thing. I hate it. It's, it sucks. It's uncomfortable. Um, but it's a couch and I got it for free because I found it on the street. And you have to be careful with this, obviously, you know, like make sure it's clean. Make sure you, when you bring it home, clean it really well, wash everything. Like, you know what I mean? But this is just one of those things when you're really, really in, like really down bad. Um, I got a lot of things through there. I got, I have a chair right there that I got through 
that I just found on the side of the street. I found a rice cooker or a pressure cooker on the street. And like half my furniture was from the street. Like that little thing right there I got from the street. This thing, I don't even know if it shows up in the video, but I got this. I found that. I found this thing on the street too. And really the only things I bought were my dad, my chair, this, this ergonomic chair because I have a lot of back pain and I do have to study very long hours. So it's important for me that I'm able to you know, maximize my study sessions. Same with my desk, because this is like a standing desk that I was able to get a really good deal on. I got like 50% off, but also my desk is really important to me because I do most of my work there and my bed, you know, a lot of important things happen in your bed. I really need to sleep. I need to be functioning, functioning at 100% all the time. So that was also really important for me. But anyways, y'all, there you have it. These were my tips on how to save some money. I hope you found them useful. I hope you found them helpful. I know there's many other things you can talk about to save money. If you have any ideas yourself, share them with our community and comment on the video below and tell us what works for you. We'd love to hear what your tips are. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really appreciate all the support and all the love you guys have shown us. Also, if you haven't, go check out our latest episode on La Platica. We were recently featured there. Great experience, and we really enjoyed that podcast. Go check it out, y'all. Anyways, this is Irvin from Foods and Medicine, and I am signing out.